Hey guys, hope you're doing well. It is middle of October. We're starting to see some of that gorgeous color change here. And today we are talking lotions and potions. Also known as amputee skincare. I get a lot of questions, especially from new amputees about skincare. What can I use on my skin? What I can't I use on my skin? What do I use for cleaning, lotions, sweat management, all that stuff. Today we're going to be going over some of the most common skincare products that I recommend for my patients. First up we have A&D ointment. So if you've seen any of my other videos you know I routinely recommend A&D ointment just to help reduce any friction between your skin and the liner. The most common areas are up in the groin area for above knee amputees. You just need a small amount in between your skin and the liner. This is also good for transtibial patients if there's some adhered scar tissue at the distal anterior tip so that cut end of the bone. You want that skin to be mobile. So our skin moves very well. But what can sometimes happen after an amputation surgery is even though it looks healed on the outside, it usually takes about a year for that underlying tissue to heal. And if you're not massaging that area, sometimes that tissue underneath can Form scar tissue that adheres to the bone so it the skin isn't as mobile as we would like it to be and that can cause some discomfort all right next up we have Dawn dish soap what I'm usually recommending patients clean their liners with I do have a separate video about cleaning your liners so if you haven't seen that I'll link it below so you can check it out now if you're like all right Dawn dish soap that's really weird I really don't want to be <laughs> washing with dish soap the other thing I would recommend is either uh, Neutrogena their liquid soap or Dove, their unscented uh, for sensitive skin. You just want to stay away from anything that has harsh antibacterial properties. Don't be using Irish Spring, don't be using Dial Gold. Those things have a high probability of irritating your skin. All right, next up we have Lanolin, also known as a uh, nipple cream, and you know. I've used this a lot as a breastfeeding mom, but when it comes to prosthetic applications and caring for your skin, I don't really use this all that often, but I did have a patient, he had a current socket for a while, but he hadn't been seen by his prosthetist for, I think it was at least a year at that point. The socket was no longer fitting optimally, and he was getting a lot of pressure at his distal anterior tip. And over time, that pressure turned into a thick callus about the size of a half dollar. Caveat, just kind of a side tangent, please do not let anyone tell you that if your socket is painful that you just need to suck it up and work through the pain and let that skin toughen up. Please do not let anybody tell you that because the, those type of calluses, they can be pre-ulcerative, they can crack, bleed, lead to problems. I gave him a little tube of this to be using every day to just soften up that callus, that skin. In the meantime, we were making him a new socket that would that was appropriately fitting. So with this, you can use it to help heal that callus, but make sure you follow up as well to make sure that that socket gets adjusted or if you need a new socket that fits more appropriately so you're not getting that unwanted pressure. Next up, we have isopropyl alcohol wintergreen option. This goes back to keeping your liner clean. Even when you're washing your liner well and washing it regularly, it still might get some funky smells. Washing it with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol once a week can help just make sure it rinses off and does not dry on the liner. And if you're still getting funky odors, even just laying the liner out in the sun for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour can help as well. Next up, Certain Dry. Certain Dry is actually a prescription grade deodorant that you can buy off the shelf. Prostatist, you can also uh, contact the company to get free samples. So I'm usually using this as a last resort 
for patients that have excessive sweat. Right now we're heading into kind of the cooler season, but especially if you live in a climate that is hot or humid, you might have excessive sweating and you might have tried everything. If none of those things are working, this is what I'm using as a last resort to essentially um, pickle the limb to kind of break that cycle of sweating, which I'll be talking more in depth in a future video in a couple weeks, so stay tuned for that to figure out some tips and tricks for excessive sweating. Last one is Alps Skin Lotion. I just order a sample of these so I can hand them out as needed. One of the things when it comes to skincare with a prosthesis is once you have that liner on, your limb is in an enclosed warm environment. And so you wanna be careful about what you're putting on your limb. And a lot of people ask me, can I use this lotion? Can I not use this lotion? And especially with lotions, one of the main problems tends to be there may be alcohols that could be potentially irritating along with uh, fragrances that could potentially be irritating. So that covers all the basic uh, skincare products that I am most often recommending to patients. Let me know if you have any questions below related to any of this or uh, skincare. But I hope this was helpful and I hope you guys are doing awesome and I will catch you next time.